Hey guys, Kevin here from the Feeler Group, and this week we're going to talk about what's going on with the Ottawa real estate market. There's changes going on right now, but the biggest one is the spring market is finally here. So buyers get ready, we're seeing more and more homes hitting the market. When you take a look at this graph, take a look at the green line, and you'll see the new listings by week since the beginning of the year. Last week you'll see we almost hit 800, while previously we were around the 600 mark, down in the 500s in February, and all the way down in the 300s. We've seen the home prices increase significantly since the beginning of the year, but as inventory increases, buyers will have more choices, calming down the bidding wars a little bit. Other big news is fixed rate mortgages are still on the move and they're predicted to be above 4% before we know it. In January, a five-year fixed rate mortgage with a 30-year amortization was sitting around 2.5%. Today, it sits about 1% higher than that. And if things continue, we're going to see it reach 4%, by the time Easter comes. Experts are predicting that it's going to settle somewhere in the low 4% range. So on March 29th, the government announced amendments to the Land Transfer Tax Act, which impacts the non-resident speculation tax. Effective March 30th, the government is increasing the non-resident speculation tax to 20%, expanding the tax to apply province-wide, and eliminating the rebates for international students and foreign nationals working in Ontario. But what does this mean for sellers? While the overall market is still hot and supply is still low, the downward pressure on buyers and the increased competition is going to make it a little bit more difficult to sell your home than it has been the last couple months. So today, I figured I'd shoot a video on how to prepare your home for sale. Well, a lot goes into preparing your home for sale and of course selling it. I'm going to go through seven easy steps to help you prepare. Number one is going to be any deferred maintenance. So that's going to be stuff like holes in the walls, clogged gutters, any caulking that needs to be redone, stuff that you don't even see anymore and that is very easy to fix or very cheap to hire someone to do. But a buyer's always going to overestimate those costs. So make sure you get those done as soon as possible. Number two is going to be declutter. Spring cleaning time is here. So take this opportunity to sell, donate, or put away all the stuff that you don't need that's lying around your house. A house that's cleared out can feel a lot more spacious compared to one that's all cluttered. It can seem very small and unappealing to a buyer. You can store things in the garage, the attic, or if you don't have those, you can always rent a storage locker. Number three is gonna be brightening up your home. Too often I see buyers pass on beautiful homes because they say it feels too dark. This is a simple fix. You can change the paint, you can change the lights, and you can open the blinds or change the drapes to make sure that they allow more light to shine through. Buying a home is often an emotional thing, and it's all about how the buyers feel when they're walking through the home. Number four is gonna be the most difficult one, which is gonna be the updating. So that could be anything from the kitchen, to the bathrooms, to the floors, to the electrical, to the door handles, to the light fixtures. And why it's most difficult is because sometimes people will make changes and make huge money from them. And a lot of times people will make changes just to end up with the same value. This is where I can come in. If you have any questions about what you should update versus what you shouldn't, you can always give me a call. Number five is going to be curb appeal. We all know how important first impressions are. And it's often that whatever our first impression is, we find reasons to back that up. So if we have a negative first impression when we're walking up to the house, we're going to find a lot of negative things in the house. Whereas when we have a positive first impression, we're gonna find positive things to back up that belief and fall in love with the home. So simple things like the grass, any landscaping, the painting of the front door, pressure washing of the house, even a nice welcome mat can make a big difference. Number six is gonna be depersonalize your whole house. I like to tell my clients, make it look like an Airbnb. They wanna see the functionality of the home, but they don't wanna see the people who live in it. It can be intrusive when you walk through a home seeing pictures of the people who live there and the buyer wants to feel like it's their home, not like it's your home. All right, and so the last tip I'm gonna give you in preparing your home for sale, I'm gonna say is the most important and that is gonna be start interviewing realtors early. You want to at least interview two to three realtors because the stats show that almost 70% of homeowners would not go back and use the same realtor they used on their last transaction. This is a shocking fact for my industry and something that we can't ignore. You want to make sure that you choose the right realtor for you. Things to look for in a realtor are obviously their professionalism, but their client satisfaction. Take a look at their Google reviews. Take a look at their track record. What is it that they do for marketing? Do they offer things like staging? And what are they going to do to get your home sold? 
And once you've interviewed at least two to three other realtors, make sure you give me a call and I'll show you how much more we do to get your home sold. I hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week.